rock back digs on his heels. He, he just stayed on it so long and was so patient. Welcome to Big Play Anatomy. I'm your host, Vern, and this is my co-host, Jay. And today we're going to look at Travis Fulgham and his week eight big play. All right, Jay, let's look at Travis Fulgham on this play. He's here at the bottom of the screen. It's second and 14. They're deep in Dallas territory, and he is in a plus split. What do you see here? Yeah, so right off the snap, what you're going to see is you're going to see Fulgham. He's going to use some foot fire, and he's going to take about six steps, and he's going to throw off uh, Trayvon Diggs. Uh, he's going to win the outside. Diggs is going to take a step, in, not a step, but he's going to kind of position himself inside. And Fulgham's going to take full advantage of that, get to the outside. You're really going to see the long strides from Fulgham as well as he breaks to the breaks to the perimeter, really wins the red line here and stacks the DB, uh, extends out, secures the catch with his hands outside of his frame, and does a great job of understanding where he is along the sideline as well to stay inbounds and show great body control through the entirety of the catch. This is really impressive work by Fulgham. Vern, what did you see on the defensive side of the ball? All right, we see here that Diggs is matched up against Fulgham in inside leverage, right? Even though he's got help hit toward the inside. When, when Fulgham releases, he is doing that foot fire, like you said, and then he gets him frozen here, almost in vapor lock, right? And sitting out back on his heels, but he opens up his hips towards sideline, which basically gives Fulgham a free way or a free release to go. And he does exactly that, right? Uh, if you're going to play this type of leverage here where there's no help out there for you, you've got to make sure to be physical and drive them toward the sideline so you can limit the space within which they can work. So he, he releases here and he's, he's beat. He's already lost here, right? Now, at the release point for Wentz here, as soon as he, uh, Wilson actually sees him, he's got his eyes, as the discipline is when you're playing zone coverage, you're looking at the quarterback. What is he doing? Where is he throwing the ball? Soon as he sees that Wentz is targeting Fulgham here, he really he's like, "Oh snap! I'm in the wrong place, or I'm not necessarily going to be able to get there." But he tries with heavy effort to try and get over there. It's just not enough, and Fulgham makes this catch. It's a dime, and there we go. So, Vern, I noticed Dallas Goddard running free here. We should probably take a look at the rest of this play. Absolutely, man. I'm glad you brought that up because it's all about the context and seeing everything else that's happening. See what their the contributing factors are to this play and, and Fulgham's success. And we see here on this play that uh, Greg Ward goes into motion uh, at the beginning of the, or before the snap, really, right? And what does that tell us? That tells us that it's zone. It tells Carson Wentz that it's zone as well as the receivers. All right, so what we're seeing here is this two deep shell, right? And as the play develops and we see the snap, we're going to see Xavier Woods bump down, basically creating a three deep, four under look, right? Now, what that does, we see Wilson go toward the middle of the field to play center fielder, but that makes the two outside corners responsible for those outside thirds. What does this do? Uh, this creates really a one-on-one -on -one situation and actually creates more space for Fulgham to work because we see that Wilson is working away from him initially. It just creates that extra little bit of window that we saw on the rest of this play. So knowing that it's zone coverage, this is why we're going to see Goddard take advantage of the seam of this coverage and get open. So for more context, the second along, the defense isn't expecting them to take a shot downfield. So this is a great call from the Eagles to stress, to stress the defense, sending three verticals. Goddard runs a seam. Rager and Fulgham run fades to force pressure on the secondary. The offense knows it's zone. So the design of the coverage is to occupy two deep defenders. So by sending three verticals, it allows Goddard to get free because Fulgham wins his route early. All right, man, let's run this play back one more time. Let's pause it right here. You, you see that, that Fulgham's won this route already. It, it's pretty much over if you're even, you're leaving, right? And Wentz sees that, and you see that he makes that decision super early. If we focus up where Goddard is, right, we know he eventually gets free. But the thing is, he's not even past the point where he would be free anyway at this point. So it kind of makes us understand this decision. Also, uh, Wilson has to drop toward a deep middle, and he would probably be responsible for Dallas Goddard going deep at this particular point 
Uh, but he sees, you know, what you're supposed to do in zone as a DB is watch the quarterback so you can understand where to react and where to where the throws go and those type of things. And he sees it as soon as Carson is releasing it. He's like, oh, snap, this is where it's going. And then he tries to make his way uh, on this play. But it's already too late. It's it, This is crazy, man, because it's like in Wentz's said, I know he's like, got him, and it's over, right? And this that's just the the long and short of it really you know i never ever ever compliment carson wentz but what a great read great throw and he dropped it right in the bread basket right for fulgham to get i mean for fulgham to extend his arms out and the ball drop right into his hands that's pretty impressive so as much as it pains me right now to compliment him he deserves it i mean i appreciate that but you know there's been a ton to criticize this season because this is who carson wentz should be this is the type of swag that I believe he's trying to get back by wearing those fedoras and those press conferences, man. And I, I just, we just need him to be this guy. As an Eagles fan, please, Carson Wentz, do this 98% of the time and we'll be happy, right? Well, but, well I, I honestly think he has Mr. What do you call him? ODU to thank for that swag because until Fogum came on, we were a little concerned about Carson Wentz. Yep. Thank you, ODU. All right, Jay. We just looked at one play. And it was amazing, but we can't judge based off of that one play. But the good oh, thing no. is, is both of us have actually watched the tape. So we understand what Fulgham can actually really offer as a receiver. Things that I like in, is his ability to get open versus one-on-one. He's able to find those soft spots in the zone. He's able to track the deep ball, and he hasn't dropped a single thing in, in a legitimate fashion yet. So those are all things that I really like. What are some things that you're seeing? Uh, what I'm seeing is his con- uh, ability in contested situations. I like how he can go up and get the ball. And like you said, with his tracking ability, he's able to do that looking back to the ball, hauls it in, and if he has to get up above the DB, he's able to contort his body midair with the ability to do that, showing good body control throughout the entirety of the catch, and I really like to see that too. There's a play against the Baltimore Ravens where he went up against two different guys, able to go up against the middle, caught the ball right square at his face. No problem at all, and for a guy of his size, that's what I love to see. But uh, things that I do still want to see him do is how, how he does against press coverage, especially if he's being jammed. I want to know how he's able to handle that situation. So once we get a chance to see that, it'll kind of check some boxes for me. Absolutely, man. And I know that we're going to get a chance when he plays Green Bay. I believe it's in week 13 against Jerry or Alexander. He's a more physical corner. Uh, if he can win there, then I, I'm sold, man. And in and, 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 and that respect, I would say that I would say he is worth a two, at least, you know, a 21 second. Um, and maybe borderline, like, you know, tail end first, man. Uh, and that's what I'd be willing to pay for him because I know what I'm getting versus like these, you know, uh, players that haven't proven it in NFL yet. Yeah, if that matchup against Jair Alexander goes the way we think it's going to go, where he does show that he can beat press and he's got the hips, and, man, it's all in the hips with his change of direction. Right? Yeah, so, Charles Peterson would approve of that. So so if he if he's able to do that – I'm good with a second. I don't want to give away a first as a Debbie guy. There's guys in college that I'm really looking forward to in this upcoming draft that I want to make sure I'm positioned to get. I'm good with a second, especially if I'm contending probably an early second round pick. Absolutely, man. And, you know, I, I think we're, we've covered him pretty well, but uh, who do you think you're looking at next week? Ooh, with the matchups I've seen, I'm all about James Washington next week. He's a big play guy, and I, I, I want him. All right, James Washington. I mean, man, I kind of like saying game Steelers are hot right now, but I, I, I'm really all about that Deontay Johnson right now. So Ooh, good pick. He, he's going to eat somebody up, I'm sure. That's a good pick, but I think mine's better. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Absolutely, man. And, you know, I, I just want to say I appreciate you guys watching, and we're going to be dropping, you know, new episodes, hopefully weekly, as we continue to go forward. We thank you for watching Big Play Anatomy, and we will catch you next time.